ان الحمد لله نحمده تعالى ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما مزيدا My dear brothers and sisters in Islam in today's khutbah we're going to reflect on a story a story told to us by our beloved prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which came in the hadith of Abu Hurairah radiyallahu an and Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim in the beginning of this hadith Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that there was only three people in history who spoke when they were babies Isa ibn Maryam and Sahib Juraij the companion of Juraij al-Abid and the story of Juraij is what we want to focus on today to reflect on its meanings and what we gain from his story When Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us stories in his sunnah it wasn't for ma'lumat to gain information it was for us to reflect reflect on what we gain from the meanings from this story how can we benefit from these stories in our lives in our communities the story of Juraij al-Abid Juraij the worshipper Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us this story about Juraij who was an abid. He was a worshiper from the Bani Israel. And he decided to build a temple and to isolate himself, to seclude himself outside of the city just to focus on ibadah, just to focus on worship. And he had been doing this for a long time. One day his mother came and the temple was high up and she started to call him. Ya Juraij, Ya Juraij, Ya Juraij. And he was in his salat, he was praying. So he said, Ya Rabbi, Ummi aw salati, my mother or my salat, what should I do? So he decided to continue praying and not to answer his, and not to answer his mother. When he finished, he didn't go to see what she wanted either. He continued to worship Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala 24/7. That's what he did every day, all day. And then The next day she came and she called him, Ya Juraij, Ya Juraij. He said, Ummi aw salati, my mother or my prayer, what should I do? He decided to continue praying and not to answer the call of his mother. She came back the third day and she called him, Ya Juraij, Ya Juraij. And he said the same thing to himself, Ummi aw salati, my mother or my prayer. And he chose to continue his prayer. Even though now, Three days in a row. Obviously, she needs something. Why didn't he go to her? Obviously, his mother here. She became very angry. Subhan, I'm coming to him, my own son, three days in a row, and he doesn't answer. He doesn't come and see what I need and why I keep calling him three days in a row. So here, she did what is very difficult for a parent to do. But sometimes, when they are oppressed, and you do something wrong towards them, parents can do that. She made dua upon her own son. She said, Allahumma la tumittu. Oh Allah, don't let him die until he sees the faces of the prostitutes. There will be a fitna for him in his life because he didn't answer his mother. Time went on and Juraij continued doing what he was doing. Worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Night and day. Totally devoted to the ibadah, to the worship of Allah. One day the people of Bani Israel were gathered in one of their sittings and they were talking about how Juraij is just fully, solely focused on the ibadah. 24-7 he's worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What an amazing guy. As they're saying this, nobody can distract him from his ibadah. As they were saying this, there was a prostitute there with them. And she was a famous prostitute. Somebody who was known for her beauty. 
somebody who nobody could say no to a big fitna and if we were to imagine some of the women of this time who are a big fitna you can't do that don't imagine <laughs> fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but if you see what I'm saying a big fitna something everybody knows what I'm talking about she said if you want I'll distract him I'll distract him from his worship I'll do it obviously she's going to get paid it's like a bet now so, okay if you can do it we'll pay you this much so she goes to him nobody can say no to this lady nobody can say no to her she comes to him and he doesn't he doesn't even pay attention to her like she's not even there she keeps trying and trying and trying and he's not paying attention to her. He rejects it. Focus on his ibadah for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here, she became very upset and decided to make a trap for Jiraj for the future. Look at the people of Baltha, the people of evil. They'll plan for the future. It doesn't have to be revenge right now. It can be revenge in the future. She found a shepherd who was out with his goats or his sheep and she went to him and offered herself to him. Now he couldn't say no. He didn't have the same level of iman. So he fornicated with her until she became pregnant. After nine months, she delivered the baby. Whose baby is this? She said, it's the baby of Juraj, the Abid. They said, Juraj, the one that all of us are praising, the one that the great worshiper, the great pious man amongst us, and he's fooling us, he's tricking us. The people became enraged. They didn't go to Juraj to see his side of the story. They immediately went to him and started to scream, and they ripped him out of his temple, and they started to beat him up. He's like, Yo, what's going on? What's wrong? What happened? Because everybody respected him. Everybody cared for him. What's wrong with you guys? And they said, Zanate, you committed fornication and the prostitute got pregnant from you. And you're, 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 you're showing us that you're pious and you're this worshiper. And he said right away here, he's in trouble. They're surrounding him. And they want to kill him now. So he said, just wait. He said, where's the boy? They said, that's the boy right there. He said, can I just go pray? Let me go and pray and come back. They're going to let him pray, but then they're going to kill him after that. He goes right to the Salat, then he prays to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He comes back, and he pokes the boy in the stomach, and he says, Ya Ghulam, oh boy, Manabuk, who's your father? And he says, Ar-Ra'i, the shepherd is my father. The boy spoke at that age to show the truthfulness of Juraj. Immediately the people, because they had, they, had, uh, they had tore down his temple, they came to him, they started to hug him and kiss him and touch him and ask him to forgive them. And they said, we want to build your temple back from gold out of respect for you. He said, no, build it back from mud just like it was. My dear brothers and sisters, what do we gain from this story? What did this story teach us? First of all, we see the status of parents in Islam and the rights of our parents amongst us, or upon us. In the Quran, in Islam, what is the most important thing? The most important thing in Islam is the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To worship Allah as one without joining any partners with Him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran said, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا And your Lord has decreed that you only worship Him, meaning as one, without joining partners. Immediately after that, to be dutiful to your parents, to be good to your parents. The scholars said the fact that Allah mentions the most important thing in Islam, which is the Tawheed, to worship Him as one, to stay away from shirk, pure Tawheed, and then comes right after that with the right of the parents, it shows us the status of the parents in Islam. Also, this story teaches us the power of the dua of the parents. And pay attention to this. Because if you're a parent, no matter how bad your children might get, no matter how far away they might go, how far astray, how disobedient they might be, always remember the power of dua. And a lot of times when the children really go astray, it's because of the way you raised them. Remember that too. But remember the power of dua. And what can happen as it happened in this story, that it came back to him when he was put in this fitna where he was almost killed because of the dua of his mother. He didn't fulfill her right. She became angry. She made dua upon him. So it's important for us as parents to remember, always make dua for your children, never on your children. Because the power of the parent, the dua of the parent is, is strong, it's powerful. 
And then also to the children, to the youngsters who are here with us today, remember the power of the dua of your parents when you are disobedient and you don't fulfill what you're supposed to fill as a son, as a daughter. If you get them to where they're so upset they make dua upon you, you're in big trouble. Always remember this story. You're in big trouble if your parents make dua upon you. SubhanAllah, an amazing story. One man, he mentioned that one day he went into the room and his mother was sleeping. She sound asleep. And he said, I found my mother making dua for us as she was sleeping, in her sleep. She's saying, oh Allah, bless my son so and so. She said, he said, he was naming us name by name. Son, son, daughter, daughter, naming all of them. Oh Allah, put barakah in their lives. Oh Allah, bless them. And she's sleeping. He said, there I knew the real status and the blessing of the parents and the dua of the parents. Also in this story, there's a fiqh issue that we need to reflect on. And what is the ruling if your parents call you when you are praying? Because a lot of people don't know what to do. They heard the hadith before, but should I leave? What should I do? First of all, it's either a fard prayer, that which is compulsory, the five daily prayers, or it's the sunnah prayers. If it's fard, you do not leave the salat. If it's fard, you do not leave the salat. But what you do in this situation is the takhfif. You shorten the prayer. You lighten the prayer. Also, and this is confirmed in the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Sahih al-Bukhari from the hadith of Abu Qatada radiallahu an. When the story, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam heard the baby crying and he would shorten the prayer so the woman wouldn't be distracted. So it wouldn't be difficult to her while she was praying. Look at the rahmah, the mercy of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with his ummah. So first of all, you can shorten the prayer. Also, before that, you can make a tasbih. You can read your, your, if you're reading in your salat, you can read out loud, louder, so the parent will know that you're praying. Shorten it and then go and see what your parents want. That's the first scenario, if it's fart. If it is the sunnah or the nafil prayer, what do you do? First of all, you need to know if your parents will become angry if you don't answer or they won't become angry. Or if they're in dire need of you, or it's not really that important. Everybody knows their parents when they call them if they, what they usually need. If you know they're not going to become angry, then you finish the prayer. You shorten it, but you finish it, then you immediately go to your parents. But if you know they're in need, and they're going to become angry if you don't answer, then this, you break the prayer. You break the prayer, and you go and see what your parents, what they need. You serve them, and then you come back to the prayer. When you come back to the prayer, you start from where? From the second rakah you were in? You were in sujood in the second rakah. You go back to sujood? No. You start from the beginning, from Allahu Akbar, from the beginning, and start your prayer all over. This is the sunnah to do, inshallah ta'ala, if your parents call you when you're praying. Also, from the things that we benefit from this story, is how to deal with, or the reality of the evil people, and how they want to destruct and corrupt upon earth. Look at this prostitute who wanted to corrupt and ruin the reputation of this pious man. He's not doing anything, he's not harming anybody, he's in his temple outside of the city worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That brings khair and barakah even to the people, having somebody like that between them. But here, look at the people of evil, and the people agreed to pay her, to support her, to distract him. And this is how the people of sharr, the people of evil, always do. They come to the salihin, to the pious people, to al multazimin to the ones who are practicing their deen, and they want to belittle them, to talk negative about them. Oh, but the practicing people do this. Oh, but the practicing people do that. To degrade them. They want to distract them for them to leave the, leave the deen, to enter into kufr. They want you to make kufr, to enter into disbelief, like they entered into disbelief, so you can be equal. Or they want you to fall into sin. That bad friend who always calls you, Akhi, Allah ghafoor rahim, Akhi, ta'ala, let's do this, let's do that. The evil friend. This is the way of the evil people all the time. Also, what we gain and we benefit from this hadith, the importance of making tathabbut. To confirm what any news comes to you. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu in jaakum fasiqum binaba'in fatabayyinu. Oh, you will believe if an uh, evil person comes to you, the fasiq, the disobedient one. And this is general, even if it's a salih person, even if it's somebody who's from the salihin, pious. If somebody comes to you with some news, with some naba, some information, 
He tells you, yo, this brother says this, this brother does that. What does the Quran teach us? Wallahi, ya if we just open the Quran and reflect on the means of the Quran, everything will change in our life, in the life of the community, in the life of the Ummah. How many problems do we have now because people don't come to one another when there's, a com- when there's, a, when there's an issue? Yo, Abdurrahim, brother Ibrahim said this about you. Abdurrahim, brother Muhammad said this about you. And automatically, what is he? Enemy. He's become my enemy. He was one of my best friends, now he's one of my, best, my biggest enemies. Instead of smiling when I give him salam, it's like, and I'm making dua upon him. And it's not even true. But tabayyanu, investigate, make sure, confirm what's been said. If we start to implement this ayah, everything will change for us. When it comes to the ones who spread the rumors and the ones who spread the fitna. If the people came to Juraj and asked him, it wouldn't have been these problems. Also from the things that we gain from this story is how the salihin, how the pious deal with calamities. Here's somebody devoted 24-7 to worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of a sudden he's got people ripping down his temple, pulling him out, beating him up, and wanting to kill him. What did he do? He knows the only way out is through what? Through who? Through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was calm. He was cool. How can you be calm at the time of diversity, the time of difficulty? Through your iman, through your taqwa. He was calm. He said, just, just let me pray. He returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That at the time of difficulty, the time of challenges, he would raise to the prayer alayhi salatu wa salam. What do we do at the time of difficulty in the days we live in? We pick up our phone. Wasta. Who can we turn to? Who knows somebody here? Who knows somebody there? And we look everywhere and then we can't find it. We can't nobody to help us. Oh, Allah. Bismillah. This is the reality. As true believers, we need to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Beg on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Pray to Allah. Oh Allah, find us a way. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised. Wa may Whoever fears Allah, Allah will find for him a way out. Then we can go to the people for assistance. But first we need to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And this story reminds us that alhamdulillah, in the end, المتقين, that the good ending will always be for the true believers, the one who established the taqwa in their lives. Barakallahu li ulakum fil Qur'ani wa sunnah wa naf'ani wa yaakum bima fihima min al-ayati wa al-hikmah aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullaha li ulakum fa astaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafur rahim. Bismillah wa kafa wa salatu wa salam ala nabi al-Mustafa wa ba'd. My dear brothers and sisters, if you were reflecting from the beginning of the khutbah in the hadith, where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said there was three people, three people who spoke at the time when they were babies. Isa ibn Maryam, was Sahib Juraj, the companion of Juraj, the young baby in this story. And the third one we didn't mention, which came at the end of the hadith, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us the story of a young baby who was breastfeeding from his mother, and his mother saw a man in very nice clothes, on a very nice ride. And we can imagine that in the society we live in. People with fancy clothes, fancy cars. The mother said, Allahumma ij'al ibni mithluhu. Oh Allah, make my son like him. The young baby, to teach a lesson, not just to his mother, but to everybody, to all of mankind, to everybody who hears this story. He said, Allahumma, baby speaking, Allahumma la taj'alni mithluhu. Oh Allah, don't make me like him. And then he went back to breastfeeding. Mother is surprised, a baby speaking, and then he's making dua against what I want from him to be rich and to, and to look good and to have all of this wealth and fame, what have you. Then later on she sees a young girl being dragged through the streets. They're beating her and cursing at her and accusing her of stealing. And she says, Oh, oh Allah, Allahumma la taj'al ibni mithlaha. 
Oh Allah, don't make my daughter like her. The baby stops suckling and says, Allahumma ij'alni mithlaha. Oh Allah, make me like her. The mother's shocked. What is this? The baby explains that what happened, or the explanation came in the hadith, what happened, or why did he make this dua, is that the first one, he was somebody who was a jabbar, a tyrant. He looked good. He was driving a fancy car, but he was an evil person. So he said, oh Allah, don't make me like him. And then, the other lady, the young girl, Miskina, she's been beaten, accused of stealing. And he said, even though she was accused of this, she was truthful. So I asked Allah to make me like her. Being somebody who's truthful, even if you, tr- you, you face calamities and diversities, if you're from the Sadiqeen, you're going to be from the successful ones in this life and then in the next, inshallah ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us like her, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Even if we face the difficulties that we're from the truthful ones and the ones who stay firm on the haqq and don't turn away from the truth, even at the time of difficulties and diversities. My dear brothers and sisters, as we go home today, we need to reflect on the meanings of the story that we heard today, the story of Juraj al-Abid. Juraj, the worshiper, which came in Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim, full of benefits, full of lessons that we need to reflect on as believers. And we need to take this opportunity as well to remind ourselves when these stories come in the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that we reflect on the meanings. We don't just read them for ma'lumat. <coughs> reflect on what we gain today from being dutiful to the parents and the status of the parents and how the evil people are going to come and try to discredit the pious people and how the pious people deal with calamities by immediately returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And not to be fooled by that which is apparent because that which is apparent is not always that which is true. And the hadith in Sahih Muslim, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that Allah does not look at suurikum wa amalikum. La yandur Allah ila suurikum wa amalikum. Allah doesn't, wa amalikum. Allah doesn't look at your action, doesn't look at how you look and your money. He doesn't look at how you look and your wealth, but he looks at qulubukum wa amalikum. He looks at your hearts and your actions. And that's what's important as true believers that we perfect our hearts and our actions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who reflect on the stories of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and implement them in our lives. ثم اعلموا رحمه الله وياكم أن الله قد أمركم بأمر بدأ بي بنفسه ثم ثنى بملائكة الكرام فقال عز وجل إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما ويقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من صلى عليه بواحد صلى الله عليه بعشرة اللهم صلي وسلم بارك وعنم على نبينا محمد ورضى الله وارض اللهم عن الخلفاء الراشدين أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وانسان الصحابة أجمعين اللهم عز الإسلام المسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام المسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام المسلمين وذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر اللهم عداك عداء الدين اللهم آتي نفوسنا التقواها وزكيها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها ربنا إننا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين اللهم اغفر المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكره إلينا الكفر والفسوق والعسيان واجعلنا من الراشدين اللهم يا ربنا إن نسألك أن تكون عونا ومعينا لأخواننا المصدعفين في كل مكان ربنا أتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسن وقنا عذاب النار وقيم الصلاة يرحمكم الله